In Python, lambda functions are often used to create short helper functions. But the syntax of lambda functions is a bit unusual. To get familiar with the syntax, let's write a simple lambda function that squares a number. The syntax of a lambda function can be broken into three parts. The first part is simply the keyword lambda. This keyword lets Python know that we're about to define a lambda function. The second part is where we define the parameters of the function. Since we want to square a number, we'll create a parameter called num. The parameters of a lambda function must be followed by a colon. This colon introduces the operation, the third and final part of the lambda function definition. In our case, we want to square the num input. And that's it. We've just defined a lambda function that will square any number passed as an argument. Before we move on to discussing the purpose of lambda functions, we should highlight three key points. First, while the function in our example has a single parameter, in general, lambda functions have multiple parameters. For example, we can easily write a lambda function that takes two numbers as parameters by separating them with a comma. Then, in the operation part, we can use both inputs to do a calculation. The second key point is that lambda functions must be written on a single line of code. Third, the syntax of lambda functions is quite different from the syntax of regular functions. To see the differences, let's write a regular function called square that takes a number as a parameter and returns the square. As you may have noticed, lambda functions don't use a return statement, unlike regular functions. That's because a lambda function automatically returns the result of its operation, so there's no need for an explicit return statement. The next and most important difference is that lambda functions don't have a name. In our code, we had to choose a name for our regular function, but not for our lambda function. That's why lambda functions are also called anonymous functions. On the surface, this anonymity might seem strange. How are we supposed to use a function if we don't have a name to call it? As we're about to see, the anonymity of lambda functions is actually what makes them useful. To understand why, let's consider a simple example. Suppose we have a list of two numbers, and we want to apply some transformation to each item. For example, we might want to square the items, or cube them. Let's write a function called transform list that can apply either the square or cube operations to both items of a list. Besides num's list, transform list will take the function to apply to each item in num's list as an input. In case passing a function as an argument is a new concept to you, let's quickly explain how it works. In Python, a function that takes another function as an input is called a higher order function. Inside a higher order function, the function passed as an argument can be called using the corresponding parameters name. In our example, we can transform the first item in our list by calling the transform item function, passing the first item as an argument. To transform the second item in the list, we can call the transform item function again. To complete the transform list function, we assign the transform items to variables and return a new list with the transform values. Great, now we can use the transform list function to apply either the square or cube function to the items in my list. To square the items in my list, we call the transform list function, passing in my list and the square function. Running the cell, we get a list of the squares. If we wanted to apply the cube transformation instead, we could simply replace the square argument with cube. Running the cell, we get a list of the cubes. Awesome, but in this program, we define my list only to pass it as an argument to the transform list function. We don't use it anywhere else. To save a variable assignment, we can directly pass in the list. Similarly, we define the square and cube functions only to pass them as arguments to the transform list function. 
To avoid defining these functions, we can instead write a lambda function for these operations directly in the transform list function call. Running the cell, we still get a list of 2 and 3 cubed. Lambda functions are ideal for cases like this, where we need to pass a simple helper function to a higher order function. By using a lambda function, we make it clear that the lambda function's operation is only needed inside the higher order function and nowhere else in the program. This can help make your code clearer and more readable. Awesome, now you know how to use lambda functions as arguments and higher order functions. But did you know that Python has several built-in higher order functions ready to use? In the final part of this video, we'll see how to use two of these functions, map and filter. The map function works a lot like the transform list function we wrote earlier, except it can take a list of any length and apply an operation to each item. For example, we can use map to cube each item in this list of numbers. To do this, we call map and pass in two inputs. First, a function that takes a number and returns its cube. And second, a list of numbers. Running the code, we get a map object, not the list we expected. Luckily, we can simply cast this object to a list. Running the cell again, we get a list of cubes. Great, let's move on to the filter function. Filter works a lot like map, but instead of transforming items in a list, it only keeps items if they meet a given condition. For example, we can use filter to keep only even numbers from num's list. To do this, we call filter and pass in two inputs. First, a lambda function that takes a number and checks if num mod 2 is 0. If it is, that means the number is even and it will be included in the final list. But if the number is odd, it gets filtered out. Second, we pass the list of numbers. Just like with map, we need to cast the results to a list. When we run the cell, we get a list containing only the even numbers from the original nums list. Great, now you have a comprehensive understanding of how lambda functions work in Python. If you wanna practice what you've learned, we've created a notebook with a few exercises. Also, if you'd like us to make videos where we solve exercises step-by-step, let us know in the comments below. We're working on lots more Python explainer videos like this one, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. If you found this video helpful, make sure to share it with a friend. And if you have any questions or topics that you'd like to learn about, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching!